not such a frequent bird in Chennai, so it's always a pleasure when uh, he glides down and uh, uh, we have an opportunity to share uh, thoughts and ideas with him because Kumar, besides being a filmmaker, is also pro perhaps one of our most uh, exquisite and original thinkers and philosophers uh, on a whole wide range of subjects. Uh, it could be uh, from uh, the mere idea of uh, materialist construction to the intricacies of the subject-object dialectic to issues in color and issues in technology and the kind of effects that uh, the digital world is having on the uh, kind of real world of uh, uh, ideas and uh, thought and existence and has written prolifically on it. Well, uh, each, each of his essays is like a, uh, almost like a uh, tract of our times and uh, those who have had the opportunity of reading them have benefited greatly from it. Uh, they are not widely known, but I think they should be much more widely known that they, than they already are. I think it's time to produce a compendium of Kumar Shani's writings. Uh, for some years, Kumar has been uh, quite agitated about the intrusion of uh, the new technologies in our ways of perception and understanding the world. Of course, he's a filmmaker, a historian, philosopher, but uh, and, and as a filmmaker, he deals with a certain kind of technology and also has always dealt with it at a very high level of sophistication. <coughs> uh, being in tandem with uh, uh, a cameraman like K.K. Mahajan, for example, uh, who at a very gesture, with a very nuance of a look, understood exactly what Kumar had in mind. And as K.K. used to say that uh, Kumar never planned his shots. Uh, he never thought in bits or in modules or capsules. He just came on the sets and each moment seemed to be a self-contained moment. And uh, the, the, the inspiration for uh, this afternoon's conversation and uh, the topic for it, which is the evaluation of the imaginary, came from uh, a particular uh, sequence in Kumar's film called Kasba. It's a Chekhov uh, short story which has been converted into uh, a very, very, uh, I think, uh, uh, provocative film uh, where the protagonist is walking up to uh, the window, the jharokha of a old Haveli up in the Kangara Hills and in the, in, in the mountains. And uh, she kind of peeps out and in that moment, some extraordinary trick of the camera happens and she begins to see from both inside and as it were from outside, meaning the camera takes you uh, uh, gives you a glimpse from outside. And that simultaneity is something that uh, Kumar claims he uh, actually uh, uh, received from a very beautiful Kangra miniature. I think uh, there's a possibility of projecting that here. Yeah? Yeah, it will be very nice if we can project that. Uh, is that possible? Can you project that? So, is, is it there? Yeah, that's the one, yeah. So that uh, girl at the window, uh, who's peeping out at Krishna or whoever the lover boy is, and uh, that sense of inside outside, this she's on top also. So that multiplicity of perspectives, as seen by the miniaturists, was something that Kumar was trying to uh, duplicate uh, or, or recapture through the technological medium of cinema. Now, those who work with the digital medium today will say, what is this? This is a sitting duck. I can do it in post-production every day. I mean, what is so great about this? So that whole uh, issue about poetry and loss of poetry and uh, reconstruction of poetry as uh, a technological material is something that uh, has been preoccupying Kumar for quite some time. Uh, I've known him for at least uh, 40 years now, and uh, this has been a part of our conversation for, um, on many occasions. And uh, it, it's, it's kind of uh, uh, very interesting what therefore it does to the world of the imaginary. The imaginary, 
I mean, we are not talking about this in dictionary terms. We are taking it in more probably a, a conceptual philosophical term, which occurs in sociology, it occurs in anthropology, it occurs in psychoanalysis. Uh, there are the wonderful constructs from Jean-Paul Sartre to, uh, to, to Gilles Deleuze, to Lacan, to Habermas. Everybody has gone into the idea of the imaginary and how the imaginary in one sense constitutes eventually what becomes the real. And uh, uh, recently I had given a talk in Delhi about uh, uh, the need for a new imaginary for a new cultural action. How uh, we have reached a point of absolute tiredness with our ideas of change, of revolution, of radical uh, uh, displacement. and. We, we go on repeating the same old cliches without reaching anywhere. And one of, one of the reasons for this uh, seemingly being the lack of a new imaginary and how to reimagine re what the enemy is, what the other is, and thereby uh, uh, find a path for new solutions. And uh, in that sense, uh, is technology, is digi di di digital technology today one of those roadblocks that is going to prevent you from uh, uh, reaching these new realms of the imaginary is a question that one would like to pose to Kumar. Uh, he has uh, written up a very beautiful paper. Uh, uh, I think we will have the time for him to read it. Otherwise, Kumar is free also to respond uh, uh, in, in his own way. But uh, I think you could begin with, uh, Kumar, the way you thought of uh, uh, reflecting on this uh, miniature and bringing it into your own work. Being here, Sadanand, uh, and uh, thanks, Prasanna, for inviting me to be able to make this presentation. Uh, you know, I, I I had presented this thing in a talk uh, at, in Sydney as well, and there were very learned people uh, around me, out of which. Uh, out of which, uh, I mean, learn it in the arts. Um, some, just because of the prejudices of perspectival um, thinking, could not understand either the painting or what I intended to do with the transformation of this painting um, into um, part of the action in Kaspa, in the film which I was adapting from Chekhov. They just, these people had blocked out all other kinds of enunciation, painterly enunciation, visual enunciation, uh, and uh, the enunciation of uh, flux, of movement, you know, uh, because they were so restricted by uh, what was clearly a great revolution in uh, thinking at one time, you know, uh, Leonardo da Vinci and all these people, um, Piero della Francesca, uh, you know, made a great difference to our ways of seeing long time ago, thousand, thousand years ago maybe. But as a result, Dialectically, it always happens that something else which was already present um, in, uh, say, the icons uh, which, um, uh, which were in the churches, you know, with uh, Mary and so on, or uh, which were um, far away in far away Russia, which, uh, you know, um, uh, if you know Tarkovsky's work, then you will also know about uh, Andrei Rublev and so on, that there was another way of thinking which arises from a way of thinking, uh, seeing, you know. And uh, in spite of the magnificent changes, revolutionary changes that have taken place in both viewing and um, Therefore, in our uh, emotional 
and uh, intellectual lives uh, uh, through, uh, you know, Picasso, Cubism, uh, Surrealism, Freud, um, through uh, Jung and uh, the other psychoanalysts, and through, uh, you know, the uh, filmmakers like Buñuel um, and Bresson and so on, and uh, the, uh, uh, the creation with those technologies which are developed in Europe, in other parts of the world, you know. Uh, that is, uh, when, for instance, Dada Saheb Falke does uh, Raja Harish Chandra, he wants to play with the idea of facticity, you know. Uh, he was inspired by a film on Christ, which wanted to show Christ, Jesus Christ, as a historical person. Uh, and um, now, uh, in India, at that time, at any rate, if uh, not now, we also see, uh, you know, mythology as part of our itihas, which is our history, you know. And uh, literally, uh, itihas means thus it was, right? So it's even more than history. So uh, because it counts within itself, not only the fact, but the resonance of the fact, you know. Therefore, it can include mythology. So I want, I want you to think about uh, the, the idea of uh, multiple durations within any image, right? Uh, or uh, the for formation of multiple durations as a result of an image, whether that image be that of sound or visual and, the, and its constituents, you know? It, the durations that are offered to us are multiple simultaneously. And one of the things I started working on uh, especially since I since Khayal Gatha, because I had to deal with a very abstract form of music, uh, was to uh, work on the idea of uh, these multiple durations that is uh, uh, being present simultaneously. Therefore, the space around it also gets, uh, gets changed, because the resonance obviously is there comes back from the space, you know. And uh, can you see this? There's an area here, for example, you know, uh, where there there is something else happening, and they are probably, probably we don't know, speaking about the restlessness of love, which is the title given to it, because it is based on a poem, also. Uh, and when I saw the, the duration of, uh, now if you look at the color, for example, the movement obviously is from here to here, you know, in a circular sort of fashion here. Uh, and, and of course the sheer white then creates a cross movement to this. Now, uh, yeah, there is a, yeah, you know, uh, I was startled by an exhibition where, uh, of miniatures, which was uh, happening as a part of the Festival of India, in which there was just that, for instance, dot of yellow turban, uh, which began a circular movement, as it were, of the eyes. Uh, now, yellow, you know, is the most difficult color to handle. Its, its extension value is very high. 
it, it just explodes in any space. And I want to, you to see this not only as something which is related to color, but it is related to time, you know. And, uh, and uh, now, for instance, that, that extension value meant a lot to Goethe. He wrote a book about it. He collected several, um, several instances, as it were, of how that extension value actually um, works. But to Wittgenstein, it did not matter. He, he said that this was all wrong. It was all rubbish. You know? Now, for, for us, however, for all the artists after and before Goethe, it was very important, and we continue to work with it. You know? In the same way, uh, therefore, with white. White has even greater extension value and attraction than yellow does, you know? Now, I also want to say that uh, actually perceptive theories now do accept that nothing is a fixed, um, fixed event or fixed uh, sort of uh, yeah, object that we look at, and that the it is the array of it is the array of uh, uh, visual uh, data uh, that then uh, makes you understand the universe in which you work, and uh, so if it makes if that makes you alert to uh, the situation, it's, uh, it, you know, uh, it empowers you on whatever question you might be thinking of on a, on a sensuous level, which goes beyond the senses, you know? It, it goes beyond that particular sense that is very evident. For instance, in, uh, uh, in the biological sciences uh, as well, uh, through evolution, they say that um, uh, the cells which are there for perception of color in our, in our body uh, can repurpose themselves to become, uh, you know, smell cells that you can actually begin to... And that's how we also choose uh, a uh, banana, for example, or, uh, you know, uh, an apple, or, uh, you know, and so on. And now, when this is carried to some other levels of juxtaposition, then the possibilities are very much heightened, because you, you take it to another juxtaposition, therefore, you bring in the whole question of montage, in a totally different way. You don't think of it as one object as against another. You don't think of one event against another and so on. You, know, you, you create a new poetry. You're, and you can individuate it further because the, uh, as a poet or a filmmaker or a painter or an installation, the installation artists today have realized this. I think more than anyone else, because uh, 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 like in my conversations with Vivan, uh, for example, I constantly, uh, he also works with di uh, the new digital media, and he does transformations from his grandfather's, uh, uh, grandfather's uh, photography, which was on those glass plates, you know, to, uh, to the digital now. And, uh, so the intermediary between that is uh, film, actually, and emulsion. And, you know, there, there are two very, two or three very important things that I want to say in this context, that our actual, uh, in the 1970s already, uh, when I first visited the United States, I often heard people say that 
they are the Americans because they have a, uh, they are working with the uh, you know they they are surrounded by digital uh, uh, and other video formats uh, that their perception itself has become more sophisticated and I kept telling them I think you're making a mistake that you are probably creating morons around you because all that is being identified is not all that all that I've spoken to you about but uh, uh, the, the uh, way that technology is being used, it only helps identification of objects, fixed objects, you know? And uh, not objects or events which are constantly changing, constantly changing. And it is our, uh, it is a political act of great importance that they, sh they should do is to change the nature of the media, you know, so that people can actually look at things in movement and internalize their own action accordingly, because movement and action, as you know, are obviously interrelated. And I'm appalled at this moment uh, with the attention spans that are being uh, used by Hollywood and uh, by our breaking news type of media, you know, because it has actually, uh, it actually stops you from looking at anything. Moreover, the other very great and uh, impossible situation which has been created is that we are not given uh, the opportunity ourselves in our daily lives to create our own software. And I see the future as one where, unless we are given that opportunity to create our own software, we will be wired into a software which other people have invented for their own purpose, generally of profit, obviously, and, uh, uh, you know, which would be uh, touted as being democratic because it's easy to handle, you know. And uh, uh, this uh, has led to, in language, for instance, since we are at a literature festival, uh, even earlier in India, for instance, uh, uh, the dual, you know, Sanskrit had uh, declensions in the singular, dual, and multiple, Sing you know, like singular and plural. Uh, the duel had been dropped for school children out of uh, an anxiety to sell their schools, as it were, and sell Sanskrit itself. Um, and uh, I had uh, asked uh, Noam Kleeman in Moscow what he felt about that. And uh, Noam Kleeman uh, is still alive, and I'm so happy to hear that. I just heard that the other day because. Uh, he was especially vulnerable uh, for many reasons. Uh, you know, he was uh, handling a little flat in Moscow as a as a as a curator of the Eisenstein Museum, and he he must be the most fantastic curator ever because one would ask him a question and he would pick out a book or a note which Eisenstein had written and he would show it to you immediately or discuss and discuss it further because he knew every little dust, speck of dust in that uh, Moscow museum. It was a little flat, but the, you know, even that was wonderful. And uh, in this, uh, so he was vulnerable both under the old and the new regime, but I'm so happy that he's still alive. I just heard about it a few weeks ago. And now the point is that uh, not only technologically are we forced into using software which we may not uh, want, you know, if, uh, through democratic, democratic intentions, but we are forced to use it either as viewers as well as uh, filmmakers and uh, broadcasters and so on. And secondly, um, 
that India itself specifically is going through this um, fake democratic uh, liberalization, you know, where the political questions are being shifted into the moral sphere, you know, uh, where the, uh, ob obviously the, it is uh, the so-called corrupted, which is every one of us, because, you know, in a sense, we are all consumers. Uh, first of all, we are reduced to being consumers and not producers. And then uh, through that, uh, the corruption sets in. Uh, for instance, you see on the motorbike in every city and between uh, every two villages, a whole family traveling on, uh, on a uh, you know, scooter or something like that. And it, it, I've seen children, infants, actually being dropped by their, you know, who is the fathers or mothers, and it's a ter terrible sight. And it is, and it is a sign of that, that very corruption. But who is corrupting us? They are never spoken of. And liberal uh, democracies, and when they shift, when they shift political questions to moral questions. You know what, what it means that, you know, uh, every, and, and when the media works through identification, you know, it means that you will turn against another race, you may turn against another language, you know, you may turn against something or the other. And, you, and the other is always evil, and you are always the non-corrupt person. This is the problem with these kind of uh, articulations. And uh, neither the technologists nor our uh, political people, uh, or not our indeed people who are dealing with language, are addressing these questions. For instance, um, in 1989, when I had indeed made Khayal Gatha, I was subtitling my film in English and French, and uh, I was told that um, I may not use the subjunctive. You know. And I had a fight with my, some of my closest friends uh, who happened to be living in those countries. Uh, and I said, if you don't like it, uh, don't, don't, don't show my film then, you know? And indeed they did not for a long time. Now they have shown it. But uh, ironically at the same time, when they are, they are, they are, they are showing it, uh, Bresson's wife with whom I uh, had a long conversation after years and years said to me, can you imagine Kumar, that we are not allowed to use the subjunctive anymore, and people have stopped using the subjunctive in France and uh, England. And uh, I asked some of my linguistician friends from the from Oxford and from uh, Constance in Germany whether it was true that it is just being dropped all over the place. And uh, they said, yes, it is being dropped. Now, I want to tell you in this context that, uh, for, for instance, this thing that Sadanand uh, passed through his mind about a shot that I had uh, done, uh, that means that it has gone through a transformation in his mind uh, to, uh, from a shot which here the movement is uh, as I showed you you know it, at least two, two or three things here, here of that different durations uh, in my shot which is inspired by this they are on a different thing and so is his interpretation which is wonderful which is the intention of it you know uh, I, I did not have any of the narrative uh, um, any of this narrative there, for example, 
My movement was not vertical or diagonal or um, horizontal. It was circular and and the inside and the outside, as he quite rightly said, was uh, not separated, you know. So uh, that already shows what the, and of course the colors were different, you know, the, um, in, uh, in uh, Kaspa, I used a lot of layering of color to the garments that people were, were wearing and through also showing different kinds of light in different spaces in which um, a, a person moved. And uh, now uh, I've quoted, uh, uh, there, was a, there is a poet who, uh, whose name I've forgotten now, but uh, you know, there, he writes something like in a haiku, and uh, his daughter, actually, who was a camera person, uh, gave this to me. And her name, I remember, is Vatsala. She's a camera woman. Uh, and she says, uh, one poem is, it's in Hindi, Sham Ate Laut Ata Andhere Ka Itihas. Sham Ate Laut Ata Andhere Ka Itihas. You know? So, it, it, in very uh, poor translation, uh, I would say it says, Sham, of course, is also the name for Krishna. So, I mean, you can keep it in mind. Uh, as it is for uh, all, all uh, indigo greys, if you like, you know. Uh, evening arrives, coming back, the history of darkness is the nearest. I, uh, my thanks to Rimli, we could at least get to that. Rimli Bhattacharya, with whom I live, she is um, the closest person to me at these days. So, this play on tenses, working with the assonance, ate, ata, itihas, you know, how it, it, it is a little like also the play on line, color, etc., and which is always flexible. It is uh, not as if that is fixed for all time and in an eternal way. Um, I know there is a word in Tamil also for Vyanjana, which is used in Sanskrit aesthetics, but uh, I don't remember it now. I'd taken some page, but maybe some of you would know and be able to, that is the, the meaning of in, an indirect meaning, which does not indexically tell you what is there, you know? so. Uh, I would uh, suggest that uh, we inculcate within ourselves all derivative meanings, and in all derivative meanings, rather than rather than meanings which are, uh, you know, um, just uh, functional. You know, uh, I mean, it's obvious that the tree is a tree. Uh, you know, Sunil is a man. Sadanand is uh, the chair and so on, you know, so um, one has to go beyond it. And everything around us is, um, is destroying it, and from all different kinds of ideologies. So that it, one finds that if one has to free oneself in even the daily chore, one cannot uh, but criticize our ways of seeing, our ideology, and so on. All the time, we have to do that, and not just pretend to do it. Uh, and therefore, we should examine both the nation and the state and uh, our own daily living, uh, and, and not through the... Uh, tropes of, uh, offered to us by software from elsewhere and from uh, sometimes the, the so-called uh, things of the past can also help you overcome it. Now, for instance, uh, there, was a, there is a book that I'm trying to 
um, work with to understand my, uh, the language which I had to leave behind in my own personal um, life because of events of history, um, which is written by Catholic priests. But uh, yeah, it is on uh, the language that I had first spoken and the language that I knew, um, the only language that I knew in my first couple of years of life, uh, you know, which was Sindhi. And um, I'll just find... Uh, How they the subjunctive mood denotes some, how they they speak about it, and I find uh, some sustenance from that. That uh, it also makes me. Uh, understand how uh, Bresson's wife, how sacred it was to her, the subjunctive. The subjunctive mood denotes a mode of action or state as conceived but not yet fact. You know, it's so, so beautiful, you know. And if you can imagine that the loss of the, loss of the democratic action in people if they cannot have the language to denote a mode of action or state as conceived but not yet fact. I mean, they, they, it would be impossible to do anything of significance or to you know, empower yourself in that way, whether it is political, domestic, or uh, you know, emotional, if you drop the subjunctive. It's a, it's a hell of a hell of a hell that we are have, we have to counter, you know. Um, I think oblique uh, signification is the substance of all cultures, and the tenses themselves can go, and the senses themselves can go beyond themselves to create not only bizarre objects, which is what psychoanalysis is mainly tried to show that everybody becomes a psychotic and then uh, creates these bizarre objects, but um, and other afflic afflictions, psychoses. Uh, but it can also retrieve for us the childlike reverie of erotic adoration and the celebration of knowledge which the cultures of all lands need to have any way to be able to survive. Thanks, that's it. Quite a visual picture on uh, uh, how to transform and uh, pro perhaps radicalize our own ways of uh, uh, seeing. Uh, it certainly uh, one has to reflect on much more deeply because uh, of the kind of visual bombardment, bombardment era that we, we live in and the constant uh, overlay of uh, images and uh, the resultant sense of meaning, meaning, meaninglessness that emerges and nevertheless the simultaneous constitution of all sorts of jumbled meanings. And uh, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the realm of the discourse and the imaginary, it's, it's very clear that uh, uh, Im image is anyway a form of consciousness and when you can imagine an image like for example the transformation of this image first of all the painter who made the image then the filmmaker who bounces off that image and then the viewers who bounce off the visuals in the film there's a whole new consciousness that is uh, emerging depending on the way one can create a, a radical reinterpretation of, of, the, of those, those images and uh, obviously these radical reimaginings is what uh, uh, the imaginary is all about. It's, it's, not a, it's not a fictive world. The imaginary is not a fictive world. It, it, it's a world that 
is in the process of becoming real. And uh, I think uh, those of you who are familiar with Kumar's films will, 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 will see that process happening. Khayal Gatha is a brilliant example of a, a docu-feature which uh, looks at uh, such an abstract uh, uh, form like uh, Khayal music and actually transforms it into visual poetry. And uh, uh, in the process changes our perception of the musical form itself and the, the, pop, the potentialities within it, the ways of reappropriating something that otherwise we might relegate to the world of the classical, to the ancient, to the uh, archaic and so on. How one can constantly reinvent that and uh, reappropriate and re-radicalize some of those visions. Uh, 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 the, the time allotted to us is more or less over, but I think we do have time for interactions and questions. Is that right? So, uh, the floor is open. I think anyone wants to ask questions of Kumar. Welcome. Kumar, you have mentioned about subjunctive, but would you give an example of it? Subjunctive, yeah. yeah. In fact, uh, you know, in, in the English uh, language, huh? I wish I were a woman, for example, uh -huh. you know? Yeah. Yes. I, and see, it is referring to the future. Yes. But it is using, I wish I were, which is normally of the past. So it, in, it includes within itself yeah. um, a different, uh, different um, time connections, you know, and uh, you know, uh, the um, one of the things that I did say in the paper and which ah. also uh, one uh, Persian scholar and uh, of poetry, Persian poetry, who living in Paris had uh, pointed out to me and it's in my, in the book that I edited, uh, Yusuf something, I've forgotten his name. Uh, there is a sort of uh, continuous present tense which the real-time mode of uh, television broadcasting has imposed on the world and um, uh, within which the, um, uh, they introduce, uh, you know, doctored images and or within which, uh, and those images are like uh, breaking news, for instance, itself is a bot space, you know, this is something that I have, that's the, I have understood. And uh, as against that, for instance, the, he speaks about the visuality in Persian poetry of Hafiz and um, Rumi and so on, uh, and in Persian miniatures, which are both from the same tradition, where the veil you know, the, the veil does not only cover, but also reveals, you know. So it is not in the, uh, it's ni neither a bot space, nor is it like a lot of uh, French, uh, supposedly secular people are, um, talking about it, not, nor is it a kind of uh, suppression of uh, women. The veil is, is supposed to, as you see in a lot of our Sufi poetry also, and in the whole form of Kathak, as, uh, you know, is a revelation of truth. It is to, a truth, that truth. A, a, an instance of truth, not the truth as well which is magnificent, I think, an instance. The, every bride, there, therefore, becomes uh, divine through that, you know. So it is the, actually the upliftment of the, of the, uh, of the human uh, being. So there are these sort of things that one might recover from places elsewhere. I think Walter Benjamin has also written about this very beautifully. I can't remember the exact quote. Uh, sir, good afternoon. Uh, it's a very difficult subject, evaluation of the imaginary. 
but how I understand this is, uh, for example, you take Peter Brook's uh, Mahabharata, the, all the mythological software is uh, removed and made into a realistic film. And we have Norman McLaren's The Chair, you have seen, we have done it with no digital photography, no digital work, and we have Kurosawa's short film on Van Gogh. And we have in literature Kafka's um, a Metamorphosis and at the same time Hunger Artist. When I write a book about evolution of the imaginary, I start with all these examples and extend. Am I right in your thoughts? Uh, I don't have all the references in my mind that you have evoked, but yeah, I, I, I hardly know uh, those works at the moment, at least I can't recall all of them. And uh, yes, yes, but I, I can't recall all of them all at once now. So I won't be able to answer your question with any degree of, uh, you know, knowledge. So forgive me. This is, I think, more of uh, uh, something that I noticed when you were talking. You were talking about um, the, the way imaginary is perceived. Uh, not only in the European context, but also in the Indian context, and how that imaginary can be different. Um, but you, I mean, I felt that you'd only mentioned that in passing. Maybe you could elaborate on the ways in which the Indian imaginary is different. I can only try to indicate some of it. Uh -huh. uh, it's a huge uh, civilizational yeah. question, yeah. Uh, and uh, very, very broadly speaking. Uh, through the work that I have tried to do and failed to do and so on, you know. Uh, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, I was to make a film with uh, Pina Bausch, you know, the, the great choreographer. And uh, we used to have a number of discussions. And Pina Bausch herself, uh, uh, like I have, uh, traveled quite a bit, and uh, not just as a tourist, but as interact interacting with, uh, to interact with cultures which I hardly know, you know, like the Japanese culture, for example. And uh, so we used to discuss uh, these things. Now, uh, in one instance, I told her of the acoustics of a no theater performance uh, area where uh, I'd gone to see the no theater rehearsal. And this woman was very, very kind and she, and she said, not only will I show you the rehearsal, I just dropped in there. And then she said, I will show you something about which you can enlighten me later. So I, I went down with her after, after the rehearsal under the stage and there was this um, there were some structures which uh, looked like uh, you know those things they have on bomb shelters uh, Corbusier has worked on that in the monasteries and and uh, she said do you know what this is all about so I said I don't know this and she said I've, we've got it from your shastras but she did not say to me which Shastra she had got it from. So I said, uh, well, I don't know which Shastra mentions these uh, things. Now, as it uh, turns out, it seems to be from some Buddhist Shastra. And it was there to, um, to modulate uh, any sound which was being uh, produced on the stage. Now. In fact, it was not on the stage, it was in a temp Buddhist temple. Where there was no stage, but there was an area for the drums. And if you've seen those drums, they're very huge. And uh, then the problem doesn't stop there. The problem is that uh, the, cali the calibration equipment that we have is all technology developed probably in Germany or France and they said that while they can hear the difference because of that they are not able to uh, they are not able to read it in the 
uh, you know, falsely calibrated, maybe, by the, those parameters uh, of what actually is happening to the frequencies, you know. And it, was, it is quite unlike what uh, we have been doing in film, because we play a lot with frequencies, uh, whether it is frequencies of light or sound, and we tend to cut them or uh, add them, you know. But uh, this is quite unlike that. So, uh, and we don't have it. It's, it's a bit like Goethe's uh, extension value principle. You know, so they, and she told me that, uh, for instance, she was invited uh, to, um, by a Buddhist monk to have lunch with him at his place, which apparently he had uh, himself prepared. And uh, she was most struck by the fact that uh, she was served with a, in, in one of those beautiful Japanese bowls. And what there was in it was a stone, which was a hot stone, on which there was one prawn, one little cravette. And uh, the, around the stone was some salt. That was all there was there. So these are the kind of the insights one works with. That's it. Thanks, Kumar, for uh, another wonderful Kumar moment. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and uh, I was just thinking because you brought, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, uh, it's, it's still a tentative idea, but the, the idea of language uh, or expression in terms of a subjunctive uh, being sometimes at odds with the expre experience of, of the situation, right? Yeah. What you express and what you experience. Uh, and since you have worked with color um, on film and you work with Bresson, so you know, you, on that whole concept of color axis and color scaling and so on. The, uh, and you said Wittgenstein, so since the, the limits of our experience are the limits of our language in some sense, can, can we therefore express something that is experienced without the language to express it? Um, I was reading recently that when Homer talks about color, he calls the sea wine colored. Yeah. Uh, he calls, you know, in the Vedas there's, there's reference to red rising sun, but never reference to blue. Not in Homer, not in the Vedas, not in Homeric times. Although one would imagine blueness is yes. so abundant yes. uh, that it's, but there's no reference, no expression of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So was the language for blue missing or was it, although the experience of blue was there, I, yeah. I, I was wondering whether you, you could just probably yeah. turn your attention to a bit of that. You know. yeah, it will be speculative, so if you allow some speculation, yes, uh, certainly. And uh, it is quite possible that the experience of blue was definitely different. So it's, 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 you know, very, very, very possible that that is so in the time of the Rig Veda, you know, um, on all counts, because of evolution, uh, one, and because of the environment as well. You know, the, uh, this is known that uh, the, um, the urban skies of uh, India, for example, have, uh, are more colorful because of the pollution, you know, in those, those very cities that we have grown up in. So that, that's very possible. But um, actually, if I can find it, I will also get a sentence out from here. We are witnessing uh, an impoveriz impoverization of language at the moment of significant forms of tonalities that slip into resonances and overtones of a particular time and place. It's acoustics that can make you levitate or sink into the bottom of the ocean. You know, we are living through such times where actually our uh, uh, perception, cognition, and, um, you know, action itself uh, dependent on that is being challenged uh, 
And this is not to be interpreted as being against the change, but a fact of change, you know. So, so you can levitate or you can sink and, you know, into the bottom of the ocean to go beyond the senses. To, you have to get to some sense or the other. And in fact, in the Sankhya philosophy, you know, the chitta is also considered to be a sense. Or the common sense in English is, is uh, obviously de uh, dealing with the mind rather than different. So we can go beyond the senses into the ultra not yet. You know, it is possible. That's what we try to create anyway in uh, digital or film practice. And infra to be. So, you know, doing something opposite. So one cannot be very sure, but uh, at least uh, it seems quite feasible that actually the blue was looked upon as violet. Violet is very close to blue. And uh, you get that distortion in the ultraviolet uh, in Kodachrome, for example. Uh, you know, I used to get very, very annoyed. Uh, Kodachrome doesn't exist anymore. It, I, I loved that kind of uh, emulsion. It was, it was slow and it had, um, it had a density, you know, it almost made and therefore a modulation of movement which is unparalleled to my mind. It was reversal stock. You must be knowing that too. And uh, you can't get anything like it, but the blue in it used to be always closer to violet, you know, which, I, which used to irritate me no end. <laughs> uh, this is kind of adding to what Shashi was uh, saying, you know, I was thinking about this absence of blue. Yeah. Uh, it's also like, you know, in the Quran, you don't find many references to the camel and the desert. Okay. Uh, so there is, uh, when you have a condensed, very suggestive, highly stylistic kind of expression or the need, a context where you need to express like that, there is, a, uh, there is no need to state the obvious, you know, yeah. or the, uh, you know, what is it's perceived possible. as ordinary. And perhaps at that point, the 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 necessity is to transcend the, yeah. the, the, the ordinary or what is perceived as ordinary. It is. And yes. also there is a compulsion, the internal compulsion to perhaps uh, look at what is beyond the obvious. Hmm. And then that is also an entry into the imaginary which we yes, are talking yes. about. The prohibition yeah, the is prohib like the Varjit Swara yeah. we have the, in our, all our music, you know, in the raga structures. So, uh, we have some suppression of something so that you may create yeah. some, something extraordinary. So that point of departure perhaps is very, very important to yes. note, hmm. like, you know, where transcendence is possible. Yes, yes. So that, that, uh, that in between space where the art, where the artist is made. Yes. You know? So, uh, that's quite possible. Thank you. It's like Paul Clay said, the line is after all a point that has gone out for a walk. Uh, so this whole, uh, let's say the uh, binary between imagination and uh, the nature of human consciousness and uh, where we locate uh, the idea of perception and the idea of imagination because perception is always partial whereas imagination can totalize an experience and uh, that's where the, the, the world of art steps in and uh, uh, makes possible all this kind of multiple per perceptions and multiple perspectives. Uh, whereas uh, in, in the real, you're, you're stuck to uh, a, a certain limitation that, that, that you're subjected to. Uh, so, uh, it's, there's, there's much to chew on this. The, uh, in, 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 in the philosophical debates that happen between the 1940s and 1980s in the, in the French universities, for example, there are many people who were very much pro the imaginary and uh, quite a large number of people who are actually challenging it and questioning it. 
uh, and uh, for example, someone like uh, Charles Taylor, for example, uh, reduced the realm of the uh, modern physical imaginary to uh, the realm of the uh, virtual, uh, the realm of the subconscious and the realm of the reflexive and saw these as negative categories, saw these as uh, limiting to uh, any actual advance in, uh, in thought or in action. And uh, there have been therefore schools of thought that have played with this and they have, that have uh, uh, you know, come upon several uh, divergent opinions. Uh, so the, uh, the issue is wide open, it's, it's, not, it's not closed. There is a, uh, the, the subject of the imaginary is a, is a vast, vast subject, but the point is it's the imaginary that eventually can lead to the actuality. And uh, sometimes we find in certain eras the artists are way ahead. That's why we call them the avant-garde. They are way ahead of political processes and they're able to uh, foresee a certain kind of transformation that is possible or that is arriving. And at certain times, uh, the forces of the imaginary are, are, are on a back foot. Uh, it seems like today we are probably on that kind of a back foot and we need to reinvent and reimagine the imaginary, a new space from where a new kind of freedom can, can be posited and uh, uh, can, be, can be suggested. So with that, I think uh, I'd like to thank Kumar very much for an extremely rich morning and uh, all of you for being here and uh, the Hindu Lit Fest in Prasanna for making this possible. Thank you.